everybody so AMD they're finally launching the Ryzen 9000 series and with it the Zen 5 architecture that we've all been waiting for but they're not launching all of the processors right away so for the time being we're getting the Ryzen 5 9600X and the Ryzen 7 9700X but look instead of approaching this video in the usual way I wanted to do something a little bit different and speak to all those folks who are still on say like the Ryzen 3000 series is it finally time to upgrade the AM5 with these new CPUs, or should you just sort of like upgrade in parallel because that AM4 socket gives you so many options. So should you upgrade me to like the 5800X3D? Well, let's look into how something like that might go. Price-wise, the Ryzen 7 9700X looks like it provides a perfect starting point for someone who might still have one of those upper mid-tier 3000 series CPUs because it somehow managed to dodge the inflation bullet and is priced even lower than the 3800X and 7700X. So of course, it's gonna factor so heavily into someone's upgrade thought process. But still, if a gamer takes platform costs into that equation, an upgrade to it would still cost a lot more than simply jumping onto a 5800X3D. But does the 9700X, even with its lower price, provide enough of a performance increase over any of the 7000 series to warrant a glance? But anyways, speaking of temptation, you gotta check out this case from Thermaltake. The new Tower 300, definitely a unique looking case with a three piece panoramic front view made specifically for micro ATX motherboards with insane hardware support, like a 420 mil rad fits on the side of the enclosure with this easily removable fan bracket. My four slot GPU fits in no problem with breathing room all around, fully dust protected on all sides too. The optional LCD screen is super fun and the lay flat mode <laughs> brings the Tower 300 into a whole new universe. Definitely explore the color options too, all linked below. So anyways, with that out of the way, there's a couple of things that anybody who's looking for a system upgrade would likely need to research first. And one of those things is, are they going to need a new power supply? Is what they're upgrading to more efficient or less efficient than what they currently have? So let's go down that power consumption rabbit hole because in gaming, even with an intensive title like Cyberpunk, the 9700X sips back power even less than the 7700X and it's in another dimension when compared to the Intel chip. However, the 7800X 3D, well, that's ultra efficient in gaming, mostly due to its low clock speeds. Also remember, there's going to be a pretty massive delta between AMD's stated TDP value and actual power consumption. So here the 9700X might draw almost 90 watts, but that's still a lot less than what other CPUs require. And that leads to very, very good temperatures, even in a closed case environment with a $30 air cooler like the Peerless Assassin installed. Look, I know the popular narrative says previous generation AM5 CPUs were hard to cool, but when gaming, processor temperatures aren't something you're gonna need to worry about at least not with this one. Meanwhile, despite lower temperatures and power, the 9700X essentially hits the same overall clock speeds as the 7700X, while having a significant advantage over the 7800X 3D. So it should be interesting to see whether or not the 500 megahertz difference and the new architecture will make up for the lack of 3D V-cache. Then when you hit all these processors with a full core workload, the 9700X still runs below 90 watts, which is, well, actually incredible when you consider the 7700X needs a whole 50 watts, yes, 50 watts more. It's also significantly better than the equivalent AM4 CPUs and Intel, well, what can we really say about that? And that efficiency makes the 9700X incredibly easy to cool with the Peerless Assassin. Meanwhile, getting the 7700X below its maximum temperature has always been a challenge, especially on air cooling. I mean, I would have never ever recommended the 7700X in an SFF build, but the 9700X, well, that wouldn't be a problem whatsoever, even with a good low profile cooler. There's also a little bit of a trade-off though. In full core workloads, the 9700X takes a clock speed hit when compared to the 7700X. So AMD will be counting on Zen 5 architectural changes rather than frequency increases to power these chips over the Ryzen 7000 series in certain situations. So obviously, these CPUs are going to have some clock speed disadvantages when compared to previous generations. So we have to see if all of Zen 5's under the hood architectural changes are going to make that much of a difference. And look, I said this is going to be a gaming focused video, but that doesn't mean we're going to cast aside full core workloads and 
regular testing outside of gaming. So I wanna power through all of those results right now. So in multi-core workloads, we're looking at a very incremental performance improvement. It isn't anything spectacular and certainly not something that is going to make anybody with a 7000 series chip consider these new CPUs. There might even be some edge cases where the old CPUs have a narrow edge too, but those won't happen all too often. Overall though, it feels like the 9000 series is built for insane efficiency rather than destroying their predecessors. Where this chip really shines though is in lightly threaded situations where it's comfortably ahead of the 7700X and even manages to leapfrog the 14700K. And that lightly threaded dominance could really help shake things up in a gaming scenario since frame rates aren't just something one dimensional. Because what each individual game prefers, that can be highly variable when it comes to CPUs. Some of them love 3DV cache, other ones love very, very, tight memory timings, and the list goes on. Still, some titles we've seen couldn't care less if 3D Vcash was even there. So it makes you wonder that 9700X, where will it land in the grand scheme of things, especially against something like the 7800X 3D? And yet gaming will probably be a huge disappointment for a lot of people. I mean, sure, despite having a clock speed disadvantage, the 9700X tends to beat the 7700X. Well, most of the time anyways. Sometimes by a little and sometimes by a bit more, and yet at other points, it's a statistical tie, especially when we add a bit of GPU bottleneck into the equation at 1440p. There's even a few games where the older processor actually wins. Sure, there aren't a lot of them, but for people hoping for Zen 5 dominance, well, it's definitely not happening here. Meanwhile, against the 7800X3D, it isn't even close. In most situations, even at the higher resolution, 3D vCache makes a world of difference. Though you've probably noticed some games that don't really benefit it quite as much. And in those, the 9700X can come close, but those are actually few and far between. But when comparing relative performance in the context of a system upgrade, of course, the 3800X is the most important CPU here. Newer processor generations, even on the AM4 platform, offer an unbelievably big jump forward for frame rates. But what's actually the best play for someone with an older chip like this? To me, the 9700X definitely doesn't make a compelling argument for itself, not at all. I'd actually say though, if you're looking at platform upgrade costs as a whole, the 7800X 3D does start to make a good reason for itself here. Because, I mean, just look at the performance it brings to the table in gaming. There's of course also the knowledge that in the near future, AMD's definitely gonna be dropping X3D chips into their Zen 5 lineup. And after what we've seen here with the 9700X, that would have me seriously pumping the brakes on any upgrade plans, for now at least. And yes, that includes the 7800X 3D, because like it or not, it is definitely going to be overcome by any X3D chip on Zen 5. And that's actually gonna be a major problem for AMD's 9000 series in general. It's a problem of their own making too. In a lot of ways, those X3D chips make every other CPU in their lineup look kind of pointless for gamers. I mean, sure, there's always gonna be people who look for an edge in multi-core workloads too, or who just can't afford the X3D premium, but gamers should definitely gravitate towards those chips. Even if they have to wait a little while for them to go on sale like what happened with the 5800X3D. Speaking of which, if you're currently on AM4 and absolutely positively need to scratch that upgrade itch right now, I'd actually look at the 5800X3D. Even now, years after its release, this thing can still hold up so well to 9700X. I'd actually grab a 5800X3D, put the money I saved by not buying new memory and a new motherboard into a GPU upgrade because that chip and the AM4 platform as a whole still have years of life left in it. Of course, I also need to mention the 14700K because at its current price of $400 or thereabouts, it might look tempting on the surface, but don't fall for it. I can't repeat this enough, don't fall for it. It runs hot, it's power hungry, and most importantly, it's tied to a dead end platform that's seeing an epic number of stability problems, some of which I'm sure we don't even know about yet. So where does this leave us? And I think we need to take a little bit of a pause here and go back to the way that AMD has specifically marketed these chips. Everything about it so far has been tempering expectations, not setting insane goals, especially for the 9700X, because this, this is the power of Zen 5. It's not in lighting the benchmark charts on fire. It's not about providing a huge generational increase in gaming. What it is, is it's 
AMD's efficiency play. And I know that there's going to be a lot of sad faces out there that we are not seeing like a Ryzen 2000 to 3000 series jump or a 3000 to 5000 series jump. This is simply about getting a more efficient CPU architecture into the hands of consumers. And yes, that has led to incremental performance increases and really nothing more than that. But those performance increases, it's only half the story. The part I'm most excited about is the 7000 series has been cleanly beaten by a new generation of chips that have insane performance per watt and as a result are infinitely easier to cool to. And look, the last thing anybody wanted to see, okay, maybe Intel wanted to see this, is the 9700X delivering what's essentially the same gaming performance as the 7700X. I mean, I guess that lower price should have been an indication of where AMD themselves expected it to land, but still, it's not a good look at all. As a matter of fact, I think the 9700X, as well as most other processors that will be launching in the 9000 series lineup will just be pretty disappointing for a lot of people, especially for gamers. It just feels like there's, there's more left in the tank, that AMD was a little bit too conservative here, maybe a little bit too much of a focus on power consumption. But that also means that there could be a lot of benefits from using something like PBO on these chips. And that's something that we're gonna be checking out in an upcoming video. So anyways, I'm Mike with Hardware Canucks. I hope that you enjoyed this video where we focus a little bit more on the upgrade path and testing a bunch of games. I'm gonna see you in the next one. Have a great day.